Hello and welcome to MATLAB programming for numerical computations. We are in week number 7. In module 7, we are going to cover ordinary differential equations initial value problem. In this module, we are going to tackle methods for solving ordinary differential equations. In lecture 7.1, we are going to go over introducing ourselves to ODEs and take up one example and solve it using Euler's method. Euler's method is one of the simplest methods for solving ODEs. So let's, let's look into the ODE problem. So introduction. What is an ODE? ODE is so when we want to solve an equation of the form dy by dt equal to f of t comma y subject to initial conditions y at some time t equal to 0 is given as y0. We start with that initial condition and march forward in time at each time finding the value of y at that corresponding time instant. In this way, we will get the overall curve y as a function of t which I have plotted over here. Now, the function f of t comma y is nothing but the slope of this y versus t curve at any point in the domain. Okay, so if we are going to start with a y0, t0, we will then march on and find y1, t1, y2, t2, y3, t3, so on and so forth is what we are going to actually find. Eventually, we will develop the entire curve y as a function of t. And that is the actual solution that we are uh, intending to find using a numerical scheme. The discussion and theory for numerical methods for solving ODE IVP initial value problems is discussed in computational techniques course module 7, the link for which is given over here. In this lecture or for that matter in this course we are not going to cover any theory or discussions regarding uh, ODE IVP, rather we will use MATLAB in order to solve the initial value problems. Let us get started with one of the simplest methods, which is known as the Euler's method. Before we go on to Euler's methods, method, let's look at how would we want to solve this ODE. We can write dy by dt in a finite difference form yi, minus, yi plus 1 minus yi divided by h, where h is known as the step size. Okay? If we remove the limit h tends to 0 and take h as a very, very small value, we can rewrite this equation in the form y i plus 1 equal to y i plus h multiplied by function f calculated at t comma y. Now, if the function f is calculated at y i and t i, we get what is known as Euler's forward difference or sorry. Then we get what is known as Euler's explicit method. In general, numerical methods for ODE IVP, we try to find certain slope SI, which is the best estimate that can be used in order to march forward along this curve. So SI is going to be dependent on y, Y's and T's and we are going to find that particular SI such that we get YI plus 1 as close as possible to the true solution. In the simplest case, we can consider SI as nothing but F calculated at TI comma YI and that's what Euler's explicit method is. YI plus 1 equal to YI plus H times F of TI YI is the formula that we will use for Euler's explicit method. At the initial time, we have Y0 T0. We can use this in order to compute. Now Y0 is known, T0 is known and y0 is known, therefore f at t0 y0 is known, we can use this to compute y1. Once y1 is known and t1 is known, we can use them to compute y2, that we can use to compute y3, so on and so forth. Okay, So this becomes a fairly simple straightforward method in order to solve ODE initial value problems. The problem with Euler's explicit method are two. The first problem is that the method is not very accurate. To tackle this problem, we are going to talk about Runge Kutta method in lecture 7.2 and thereafter. The second problem is uh, uh, regarding uh, the step size that we need to choose in order to get the system to behave, 
to be stable. Uh, stability of numerical methods is something that I will introduce in this lecture, but that is beyond the scope of this course. I will introduce the concepts of stability and so on mainly for the sake of completeness, although it's not strictly a part of this MATLAB course. Okay. So the example that we will solve is dy by dt equal to minus 2ty with the initial condition y0 equal to 1. If we solve this analytically, the solution we are going to get y at any time t is going to be equal to e exponential of minus t squared. What we want to do is use Euler's explicit method and compare the solution using Euler's explicit method to the analytical solution that we have written down over here. Let's go on to MATLAB to solve this problem using Euler's explicit method. Okay, let's create a file called Euler explicit. Solve ODE IDP. So we have put down some parameters t0, y0 was what was given to us. Let's say that we want to solve it until time t equal to 5 and let's say the step size that we are going to use is 0 0.1. So I've put this down uh, all of this over here. Initializing. Okay, I have put a transpose over here because we want our t and y to be column vectors. y is the solution vector and that we will initialize as zeros of size n plus 1 and y1 which is the first value is equal to y0. Keep in mind, uh, you would have realized by now that MATLAB doesn't have array uh, location 0 the arrays start with index 1 and therefore we will use index 1 for time t equal to 0. Okay. In addition to this, we also need to specify the value of n. So n is going to be nothing but t end minus t0, t0 divided by h. Okay. So let's save and run this to see that we don't get any errors. Okay. So we are not getting any errors over here. Let's now continue solving using Euler's explicit method for okay. fi is going to be nothing but minus 2 multiplied by ti multiplied by yi. That's our fi and y i plus 1 is y i plus h multiplied by fi. So that's our Euler's explicit method. So let's go and look at us. y i plus 1 is y i plus h multiplied by f computed at t i comma y i. Okay, our f was minus 2 t y. So f at, at time i is going to be nothing but minus 2 multiplied by uh, the vector t, the ith location, multiplied by vector y, the ith location. Okay, that's going to be our fi. y i plus 1 is nothing but y i plus h times fi. Okay, and, and this should do. So that completes our Euler's explicit method. Let's plot this. 
plot t comma y. So let's hope that this runs without an error. You can run and this is the numerical solution using uh, Euler's explicit method. Let's also compute the errors. So plot results and obtain errors y true equal to exp minus t squared if I remember correct yeah exp of minus t squared minus t dot caret 2 we need dot because it's element by element squaring and err equal to abs absolute value of y true minus y So that's what we have. Let's clear our screen and let's call Euler's explicit. Here yeah, solves this and let's look at error ERR. Let's call max. Let's find the max value of ERR and the max error is 0 0.035. If H was reduced to 0 0.01, let's run this. Okay, and you see max ERR. Okay, and the maximum error went from 0 0.03 to 0 0.003. So by reducing H by one order of magnitude, the maximum error also reduced by one order of magnitude. Let's save this by reducing H further. And we find max error and the max error fell by another order of magnitude. We now, instead of 3 into 10 to the power minus 3, we now have 3 into 10 to the power minus 4. So from here, you would have probably guessed that the order of accuracy for the global truncation error rather for um, Euler's explicit method is of the order of h to the power 1. This is something that we will cover in a little bit more details in one of the later lectures in this module. So let's go back, change our h to our old value and let's go back to our power point. Okay, so this was the example that we solved using Euler's explicit method. Now, in Euler's explicit method, our f we calculated at ti, yi. We could have very well calculated f at ti plus 1, yi plus 1 instead of ti, yi. If we were to do that, we will get what is known as Euler's implicit method. In the explicit method, ti and yi were already known and you could directly calculate this and assign it to yi plus 1. However, that is not possible in Euler's implicit method because our yi itself de depends on y, sorry, our yi plus 1 depends on itself through this function f. So this is a nonlinear equation which we need to solve. We can do it by using a nonlinear solver such as f solve. f solve was something that we covered in module 5 of this course. So if we were to rewrite this, we will rewrite this as yi plus 1 minus h times f at ti plus 1 comma yi plus 1 minus yi equal to 0. And this we can assign it to f solve and we can solve this. Okay. Now Euler's implicit method is not a part of uh, this particular course. However, for the sake of completeness, I have already created Euler's implicit code and I will display that to you. Clear all, close all, CLC, edit Euler's implicit. Okay, so this is the code that I have created earlier for same values of y0, t0, t end and h. Everything else is remaining same. Okay, now our f is calculated at ti plus 1, yi plus 1. So first I will calculate ti plus 1, okay, yi plus 1 is yet unknown and therefore we need to use f solve in order to solve this, okay. So yi plus 1 is the unknown quantity, so this is unknown, this over here is unknown. So we have used what is known as anonymous functions in MATLAB in order to give this particular f of x. So that f is nothing but y minus h times h multiplied by minus 2 multiplied by t multiplied by y minus y i 
So this is what is written over here. Okay. And the initial guess that we are going to give is capital YI. Okay. Uh, now anonymous functions is another thing that we have not covered in, uh, in this, uh, in this course, we are not going to cover anonymous functions in MATLAB in this, this particular course. So these are two concepts which are actually beyond the syllabus, if you will. Okay, uh, I've just shown it for the sake of completeness so that you can uh, understand how we can do this. Let's also plot and obtain errors as before. Plot t, comma y e r r equal to a b s y y true minus minus y we also need y true y true is exp of minus t squared and there's a caret dot caret sorry instead of a caret okay so this is basically what we have done for oil is implicit let's run this and hope that we won't get any error Okay. One thing you will notice is that Euler's implicit method takes a little bit longer than Euler's explicit method in order to run. That's because we need to solve F solve at each time. Okay. Uh, the figure looks approximately sim similar to what we had in Euler's explicit method. Let's go and find out the max error. Max error is again of the order of 0 0.01. If you recall, in Euler's explicit method also with h equal to 0 0.1, the error we got was 0 0.03, okay? So the uh, order of accuracy of Euler's implicit method is similar to that of Euler's explicit method. So now the question is, if the order of accuracy is similar between Euler's implicit and explicit, and implicit method is much more difficult to solve than Euler's explicit method, why are we interested in implicit methods in the first case? The reason why implicit methods are very useful is because implicit methods are globally stable. Okay, This was covered in the computational techniques course module 7 part 5 link for which is given over here. Uh, basically what that means is if we start increasing the step size we will need to sometimes increase step size in order to speed up the overall computation. If we start increasing the step size, there will come a threshold value of h beyond which Euler's method, explicit method, will become unstable, which means that you will not get a stable solution. Euler's implicit method, on the other hand, is globally stable, which means you can choose any value of h of, uh, of your liking and Euler's implicit method will remain stable. The stability is the reason why implicit methods are popular especially for solving tough ODE problems okay let's kind of let's now show what loss of stability means okay we'll just clear this and we'll go back to Euler's explicit method so now if h instead of 0 0.1 let's say if we were to take 0 0.25 and we run this okay we get the solution now the solution qualitatively looks similar to that we saw earlier only thing is it looks more bumpy and that's because the errors are higher with step size of 0 0.25 while the errors are higher the solution is still stable now let's increase this to 0 0.5 let's run oil as explicit and we see that there's something funny that's happening there's nothing that's happened in the first uh, first step, uh, first two steps rather. In the third step, the solution directly went from 1.0 to 0.0. .0. Okay, and that is uh, the reason why that happens is h equal to 0 0.5 is at the border of the stability limit. If we increase uh, our h beyond 0 0.5, we will make the overall solution unstable. So let's go and increase this to h equal to 1 and we will see what instability really means. Let's run this. Okay. As you can see, the value of uh, ti, sorry, value of yi at t equal to 5 is greater than 100. And this particular series solution is diverging. Okay. The reason is because uh, Euler's explicit method in this particular example has the limit of stability at 
h equal to 0 0.5. Any value of h greater than 0 0.5 will result in unstable solution. Let's actually go and change h to 2.5 and see what happens. Okay, and our solution has gone to minus 12. And if again, same thing, if we were to change it to 5, we will see a similar behavior. Let's change this to 10 and see what the behavior is. Okay, and you see we have gone, to the solution has reached something like minus 1 e, uh, 1 into 10 to the power 4. So we have very clearly gone, this taken the solution to an unstable region. Let's compare that with Euler's implicit. We will use h equal to 2.5 and t and equal to 10 to keep things the same as before. h equal t and equal to 10, h equal to 2.5. Let's save this. Okay, and let's run this and see. Okay, although the solution is very approximate, we do not have a very good uh, approximation using OD, uh, using the ODE solver uh, Euler's method, we still have the solution to be stable. The reason is that Euler's implicit method is globally stable. So we can choose the size, the step size h as large as we want and the solution will still remain stable. Okay. So with that, I'll come to the end of lecture 7.1. What we covered in lecture 7.1 is introduced ourselves to uh, ODE initial value problems, took up one example and solved it using Euler's method. Euler's method was the simplest method that we, uh, we could choose and we compared Euler's implicit and Euler's explicit method. In the rest of this module, we are going to work with more accurate explicit methods known as the Runge Kutta family of methods. In the next lecture, I'm going to introduce the second order Rangi Kutta method. So that's our plan for remainder of this module. See you in the next lecture. Thank you.